What is cracking everybody? I am back with another video. Today, I'm going to be discussing what I use for my podcast. Let's get right into it. I'm Danny Rubio, video resident here at Online Creator Studio. We help you learn the skills that you need to be able to create content for yourself. Today, we're going to be discussing podcast equipment. Podcasts are amazing, phenomenal, and right now, I think video podcasts are having a big boom. But it begs the question, what are the things that you need to get your podcast started? First thing first, the thing I'm talking to. Right now, I am using the Shure uh, MV7 microphone. This bad boy is really great. It's not the Shure M, the the legendary Shure, the one that like a lot of other podcasts use. They came out with this a couple of years later. Uh, this comes in a couple of versions. They have one with an XLR and USB, um, and this is and then they have a. The XLR version has some uh, additional functionality that comes on the microphone. They're pretty great. I actually really like this one. The I also have a pod mic that I have on my desk, which is a really great option. They're about 100 to 150 uh, on this price point. Everything I talk about today um, will be linked down below. They will be affiliate links, so if you do purchase anything, it will kick back just to help out the channel a little bit. In any case, um, with your microphone, look, Again, I'm using the Shure uh, MV7s. Uh, you can use whatever you want, but those are the ones I'm using. I'm using two of those. And then I have uh, XLR cables uh, with an additional, uh, I have a Rode pod arm like this. Uh, these things are pretty great uh, for booming over. Uh, the reason why I like boom, and honestly, these ones are not my favorite. Um, they were the only ones available at my guitar center when I was purchasing it for a client shoot. And... Um, I actually prefer ones that have a little bit more stability. I also like, I don't love the gap here because you can then pinch yourself if you're not like paying attention uh, or if you're moving it and you don't know, that is not ideal. And there are a lot of great options now. Um, my buddy Drew, who's on the channel, he's got an awesome one that kind of like swings, it's a low, lower profile and it swings out. So it doesn't have much of a like arm like this. It kind of stays lower. So that's the microphone, that's the arm, obviously XLR cable. If you're gonna go USB route, that's totally fine. Um, you, If you do go USB, make note that it's gonna be a USB-C. Um, that way you're future proofing for whatever machine you're going to be doing. Most uh, microphones nowadays come with USB-C, but you still might get something offhand on like Facebook Marketplace that might have a USB micro B cable, which is the little tiny one. Uh, just make sure to take note. I'm going to tell you right now, just getting started with something is better than nothing. If you're going to invest in anything for for podcasting, make sure it's a good microphone um, and a, about $50 to 100 I will leave a, a link in the description as well that goes to a free downloadable podcast quick start guide that has a couple other microphone recommendations that are under $100. Um, again, these ones are not that, but in that guide, you'll have some other information on what to use. Next thing, we have our actual recorder. This recorder is a Zoom PodTrack uh, P4. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, it gets a job done. It's not my favorite. Didn't want to buy the Rodecaster Pro uh, Trek only because it's huge and I, you know, I wanted something a little bit more portable. And this, you you can't really get much port more portable than this. This thing's actually, I mean, it's super small. You can throw it in your backpack. Here, here's the grips that I have. Um, one, the there's like these, there's these little knobs right here, these switches. Uh, the switches have uh you have four tracks the first three um can do do all of them do uh line in or phantom power uh on this last two on channel three and four three you can do like a phone call so you can like connect your phone via cable on the side and you can ch move that channel and then the fourth one you can plug in your usb uh you can plug in your use plug it into your computer and have it be a interface for USB. One thing that to note, and I will do a guide on this later, but let's see, you have to switch it over to, you can see right here, to the computer side so that it works. Uh, but I do like it that it's got four programmable uh, like sound effects pads, which comes with some programs there. It does record everything as a mix, as well as f individual tracks, which is really nice. And you have uh, individual gain knobs for all your uh, headphones and microphones that you need to do. I think it's a great bang for buck. The gripes that I have with it are the fact that like, if you forget to switch it over to 
uh, computer audio or to whatever, then you, like me, you might have a run to an issue where you're trying to do a video call with another, you know, a guest speaker or whatever and trying to use your microphone equipment and it just doesn't work and it's because you forgot to switch over that little knob. Small little things. I host a two-person podcast uh, in person with um, a co-host Marcel and at the time, Rode did not have a two-person like uh, panel for podcast, the podcast uh, the roadcast uh, duo, um, which they do have now, I think that's a pretty good uh, setup if you're looking to have like an in studio session like I do. But again, I wanted to be a little bit portable if a, in case a client wanted to do something. Um, and so I got this. I do think that the roadcaster duo may be beneficial. Again, roadcaster uh, pro another solid option, but it, they're pretty big. And so you have to wait your w weigh in on your stuff. The other gripe I have with it, other than the switches, is the fact that the battery size, the battery, like all Zoom products, if you add AA batteries in here, you cannot count on them worth crap. Uh, every single time I put new batteries in here, I can count on one podcast recording. If I have to do two of them back to back, forget about it. It is better to plug in via DC, uh, or USB-C power or via your computer. There's a lot of stuff. I'm going to make an, uh, another video about this so you can get some training on the little quirks that I found. All right, moving on. Well, I do a video podcast. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, it's called Real Chums. I'll leave a link up here. But I do do video podcasts just because, well, honestly, it just makes sense. For many years, I would always tell people, start with audio and then move into video. However, because of tools like Riverside, which you can actually sign up in the with a link down below that is also an affiliate link. If you do sign up, I get a little kickback. I do think you get a small deal. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. But Riverside or Descript or some of these other tools that offer video uh, recording to create podcasts and make it easy for you to do that, it's a, a no-brainer. Plus, with new AI tools coming out, you can not only create podcasts, but create short-form vertical, vertical format video that will help you get on social and create, uh, get people to find your show. Really powerful stuff. However, because I run a production company, um, I do have gear. And so <clears throat> I have uh, the Lumix S5. Now, this is the S5 uh, Mark II. Uh, this is the version. The one I'm recording on right now is the S5 IIx. Um, and I usually record with... Um, the 24 to 70, which is what I'm using on right now, and this 50 mil prime. 50 mil prime is phenomenal. I use 50 mil on the uh, on the S52 X, uh, which the 24 to 70. I set it to 50 mil. I set both uh, features to like uh, f 2.8. Um, F3, kind of depending on the day. For my light source, I'm using the Amaron 300C um, with a light uh, China ball, uh, the small one. The 300C is awesome. I also like the China ball because I, it does, it, it'll nice roll off, especially for two for two podcast interview. And then um, for a tripod, I am using the small rig. I'm using the tr uh, small rig like video tripods, not the newest one, but the older one. And they work great. That's all the tools I use for my podcast show. Now, this does not mean that you need all this equipment for your podcast. The essential things that you need are a microphone, whether that be USB-C or uh, XLR. If you do XLR, you are going to need a recorder, kind of like this Podtrack P4 or the Rodecaster or the Zoom, whatever other one. Um, but you need something that has an audio interface. Alternatively, you could just use something like Riverside where you can... Call people, you have a USB-C microphone to your computer, you call them, it uses video recording or just audio and get what you need. The last couple of things I use, I either use a DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut for editing my video podcast. Um, for actually editing just a, a podcast like audio only, I either use uh, Logic or I actually use DaVinci Resolve Fairlight because in Fairlight, uh, voice isolation becoming a super beneficial thing. Um, or Audition. Uh, I, I used to use um, Adobe Audition, but I don't pay for that subscription. Still a fantastic tool. Those are the options. So for me, I almost forgot there's one last thing that I use, which is called Opus Clips, which is a uh, AI short video form like clipper that looks through your content and tries to turn it into vertical content so that it, I don't have to do that. It's all right. There are a lot of options out there. I have a friend also doing Bolt Foundry. There's a couple other people in the field. In any case, it is really beneficial, especially if you want to save time and you're willing to put up some money to use their those tools. They can be really beneficial. They're good enough. They're not amazing. I think I would still, if I had time, I would still prefer cutting those clips 
uh, because you can get exactly what you're looking for. But again, we only have so many, so much time in the day. That's the stuff that I'm using for my podcast. I hope this was helpful. Focus on getting good audio. When it comes to video, use what you got. Start with webcam, then move to maybe like a point and shoot or uh, to a cheaper mirrorless camera. I think the S5 to uh, S5 II from Panasonic or from Lumix is a phenomenal camera, especially with just the kit lens. You can really go far and then level up your lenses from there. Uh, but again, you could also go with like the Sony's one of the Sony cameras. They have like a bajillion. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if there's something that I that you would like to know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. <laughs>